Hi everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today I'm going to be taking a closer look at the OCZ Vertex 4 SSD. This is the 256 gigabyte version and they were kind enough to send me two of them. So I'm also going to be doing some benchmarks and testing these in RAID. So here's a quick look at the retail box. As you can see, this is a 2.5 inch SSD, uses MLC NAND flash memory, uh, it includes a 3.5 inch adapter. It, it operates on the SATA revision 3 bus, that's 6 gigabit per second maximum throughput, and it of course supports trim. And the uh, big difference here, especially if you're comparing it to the Vertex 3 drives, which are very popular from uh, OCZ, this is an Indolinx infused drive. OCZ acquired Indolinx uh, a little while back, they produce SSD controllers, so the uh, SSD controller here is actually heavily influenced by Indolinx, uh, particularly when it comes to the firmware. Taking a look inside the retail box, we can see one of the famous OCZ stickers. It says, my SSD is faster than your HDD, which is almost invariably true. We also get a uh, installation guide with some warranty information there, so you can uh, make use of your warranty from OCZ for this drive. We have a little baggie of screws, and that goes with this adapter, which is kind of wedged into the back here. This is a 2.5 inch to 3.5 inch adapter, so you can mount the SSD to the four mounting points on the bottom. Then you can actually slot this into a standard 3.5 inch drive bay in uh, most desktop computers. That's what you will have available. So uh, if you have an older case, for example, that doesn't have 2.5 inch drive mounts, you can make use of that to secure the SSD into your case. Taking a look at the SSD itself, as you can see, got a nice Vertex 4 label there on the front, 2.5 inch. There's the look at the back. It has sort of a brushed metal housing uh, right here. There's some of the specific drive information, part number and serial number. Here at the top, you can see the serial ATA connectors. The wider one here is the power connector. The narrower one here is your data connector and uh, you can route that over preferably to a SATA revision 3 6 gigabit per second port on your motherboard. Uh, now I'm going to see if I can take this apart and show you guys the inside. Here is a look at the Vertex 4 deconstructed and uh, please bear in mind if you have one of these at home you do not want to take it apart like this because you will void your manufacturer's warranty from OCZ. The metal part of the housing here actually has a thermal pad on it and that provides a little bit of uh, protection. I would assume also maybe a little bit of extra heat dissipation for the uh, Indolinx controller there. That's the chip right at the center with the Indolinx logo on it. It's an Everest 2 controller which is the new one from uh, Indolinx now owned by OCZ. And uh, apart from that, you also have all of your NAND flash modules on there. So you actually get 16 128 gigabit IMFT 25 nanometer synchronous NAND packages, and that's uh, distributed here. You see eight of them on this side, and flipping over, you have eight more over on this side. So 128 gigabits per each of those, 128 times 16 divided by eight, and that equals 256 gigabytes total space on this. Now you also note that this SSD is listed with 256 gigabytes. Uh, you might compare that to, for instance, the, the Vertex 3, which has 240 gigabytes. Now normally when you see uh, actual storage space in a computing, computing situation, it's multiples of two, like 256 or 128. Uh, for this, the reason, the reason that other drives that list less than that is because they'll actually use some of the space on the NAND for caching as well as over-provisioning. Um, the Indolinx controller here, though, works in tandem with this little chip as well as this little chip. Those have Micron logos on them, and that is because that's actually DDR3 DRAM. Um, you get 512 megabytes total, DDR3 DRAM. That's used for caching on this drive. Um, which uh, gives you a little bit more usable space on the actual NAND flash memory itself. So now we're over here at our test bed for some benchmarks. Uh, just so you guys know, the test bed we're running is an ASUS X79 motherboard uh, with the 3960X processor. Uh, the X79 chipset on there is what is controlling the SSD. Uh, we're connecting to the SATA Revision 3, um, yeah, SATA Revision 3 connectors on there, 6 gigabit per second. Uh, that's a C600 series chipset SATA AHCI controller. Uh, for the single drives, ran it in HC AHCI mode, and then we, uh, I'm going to switch over to RAID mode for a few different RAID tests. So here's our first test results. This is ASSSD. This is the same test that I've listed, uh, just copied over for the top and the bottom. So as you can see, read and write speeds, and um, you'll notice read speeds just uh, 40, 30, 30 to 40 megabytes per second below 500 megabytes per second line. Uh, writes are incredible here, 460 megabytes per second sustained. That's 
pretty stinking good for any SSD I've seen so far. Uh, you also have 4K tests, which test uh, 4K transfer sizes. You also have a 64 threaded 4K tests, and uh, that will actually put a pretty heavy load on the SSD. Also here you can see access times, which is a highlight of most SSDs, so 0.134 megaseconds, I'm sorry, milliseconds for read and 0 0.026 milliseconds for the write. Overall score here for the single drive, 1094, which is pretty high. It's actually one of the highest scores I've seen for this particular test for any single drive, uh, and I think that's because ASSSD really likes the 4K tests. It also really likes high write speeds. Uh, you also notice down here on the bottom it's listing input output operations per second. Uh, we topped out at about 86,400 for the read and about 76,700 for the writes. Next test is Atto. <coughs> Excuse me, and I ran this in two different modes, QDepth of 4 and QDepth of 10. This is one of those tests that a lot of uh, actual SSD manufacturers will use to list these specs on the outside of the box for the drive. Uh, so here you can see uh, there's different transfer sizes on the left. Uh, the writes are the red line, the reads are the green lines. Uh, for reads, we topped out at just over 500 megabytes per second uh, for the reads right here. And then the fastest writes we saw was uh, right about here, 469. Uh, so about 469 megabytes per second, so quite good. Uh, jumping up here to QDepth of 10, again we can see similar, similar results. QDepth 10 uh, provides a little bit more load on the drive, but also lets the drive perform a little bit better. So we actually jumped up to 541 megabytes per second on the read and uh, still hovering around 470 me megabytes per second for the write. Uh, I have a lot of tests to show, so I'm going to try to go through these pretty quickly. Here's Crystal Disk Mark. This is actually on compressible mode, so zero fill. Uh, and actually the interesting thing about this drive I saw was um, there wasn't much difference between compressible data and incompressible data for crystal disk mark. In fact, the compressible data mode, uh, the numbers were a little bit less than incompressible, which is strange, at least in my SSD testing, but not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, input output operations per second down here. Uh, we had 86,000 uh, for the random read and 82,000 for the random write. Here's Crystal Disk Mark in incompressible mode, as I was just mentioning. So uh, there again, we can see about uh, between 450 and 470 megabytes per second for the max reads and writes. Uh, really good uh, 4K results here, 28.5 and 153 for the write. Again, just screaming fast uh, writes for this drive. Uh, 86,000 and 82,000 input-output operations per second, respectively, at QDepth32. All right, that's all for my single drive tests, and for two drives, uh, when you set up RAID 0, it asks you for the stripe size, and that's sort of uh, how large a chunk of data it's going to write alternate to, alternately to one drive and then the other. And I'm sort of curious to try one versus the other, so I tried a stripe size of 128 KB, and that's what these tests are showing. Uh, so we can see some sort of additive results here on the left side for ASSSD. Uh, 773 and 890 megabytes per second for read and write. Uh, again, not the fastest I've ever seen for uh, two rated SATA Revision 3 SSDs, uh, but still a really good score at 1,752. Uh, again, the writes are just phenomenal for this drive. So anything, uh, anyone who's looking to get an SSD that's really do, to do a, a lot of write intensive stuff, uh, such as video editing perhaps, a really good solid choice for you guys. Uh, for the Input output operations per second and the rate array, we had 144,000 on the read and 138,000 on the write. Overall score of 1,752. Next up, we have Atto, Q depth of 4. Uh, again, here for the writes, really good results. 942 megabytes per second was about the max. Uh, for the write, 963 megabytes per second for the read. Uh, here's Q depth of 10. Uh, again, similar results. Uh, nine, about 940 and about 960 for writes and reads, respectively. Here is crystal disk mark. Uh, again, this is compressible mode. Uh, we got up to about 875 megabytes per second max. Uh, input output operations per second, 102,000. Uh, now again, here is one of these sort of back and forth things. So uh, this, one more time, is uh, our stripe size is 128 KB. And um, if you guys want to jump back and forth in the video so you can sort of get a little bit of a comparison, you can sort of see a back and forth. Um, you'll notice here that uh, when I move over to the incompressible data, the numbers actually jump up, which again is sort of interesting from my perspective. It's again, not a bad thing, just not the typical 
sort of results that you'd see with an SSD. But here, in compressible data, we had 125,000 input, input output operations per second at a Q depth of 32. Uh, and that's all for our 128K tests. Let me jump back here to 32K. So I also ran, I also did a 32 kilobyte uh, stripe size. Let me pop that up, and I'll see if I can arrange these next to each other so you guys can get a little bit of a comparison. So there's a uh, 32, 32KB on the right, uh, 128KB on the left, side by side, just so you guys can sort of look back and forth. Uh, you might not notice a huge difference, particularly the score here, 1,752, exact same score, uh, but you'll notice that that score was achieved uh, with sort of a little bit different results. Um, actually, in the 4K, tef 4K tests, uh, we had a, a better score on the right, better score on the read for the uh, 32K uh, tests. We also had slightly uh, less, a uh, slightly lower score with just the straight 4K test. So, um, AS SSD kind of weights those and uh, gives you an overall score, but it ended up being the same with the two different stripe sizes. Let me jump over to Atto. This is QDepth 4. I apologize for adjusting these windows here. There's QDepth 4, uh, 32K on the right, 128K on the left. Here is QDepth 10. Again, uh, with the 32K stripe size, uh, very similar results. Uh, looked like it did a little bit better uh, over on the 128K tests. Let's jump to Crystal Dismark. Let me make this bigger. All right, there's Crystal Dismark. And here is where we actually finally saw uh, the RAID array break the one, the one gigabyte per second mark, uh, which is a nice mark to, to hit if you're going to RAID a couple uh, high-end SATA Revision 3 SSDs. And here also we had the, our record for these tests with input-output operations per second, 131,000 and 128,000 for reads and writes respectively. Uh, again, this is with the compressible data test. Let's jump to the incompressible data test. Also cat, uh, topped one megabyte per second uh, for reads and writes. Uh, but again, there's a trade-off here. So uh, if you look over here, on the 128K uh, stripe size, we actually had a better score for the 4K QDEP32 test. So um, if you're familiar with these different types of operations uh, that you're running uh, for, to use an SSD, you might be able to look at these numbers and say, well, that's good and that's bad. And uh, it sort of takes, takes some knowledge to do that. But I will leave it at that for you guys. There are our SSD benchmark results. And that's going to wrap it up for this video. Once again, this has been the OCZ Vertex 4 256GB SATA Revision 3 6 gigabit per second SSD. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed today's video, please head over to our Newegg YouTube channel. You can find more just like it. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.